Welcome to the Bobs, Deutsche Welle's International Blog Awards. The Bobs are about honoring outstanding websites, blogs, and social media initiatives which champion the open exchange of ideas and freedom of expression. The awards give credit to the brave individuals who often risk their lives in their fight for these basic human rights. The most important international prize granted to blogs everywhere in the world. The Bobs is also respected because it is a symbol of freedom, democracy, and equality. The Bobs honor websites in 11 language categories. An international jury of renowned internet experts has picked the winners from over 3,000 submissions. They want to give winners a chance to spread their ideas around the globe. We've received already a lot of requests from activists in other countries, sometimes NGOs, sometimes networks of NGOs, sometimes individual activists just like us who are interested in, in doing something similar and they contact us and say they're inspired when they hear about our work. The Bobs are a Deutsche Welle initiative promoting human rights and freedom of expression around the world. Like many others, our winners are doing their bit to change the world for the better. Through the Bobs, they get the international recognition they deserve. On the one hand, you recognize their work, they get this kind of support, and on the other hand, you show other people in other blogospheres what they're doing. So with the Bobs, you can discover incredible, interesting uh, work and initiatives all over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bob's Awards Ceremony at the Global Media Forum 2012. Here's your host, Connie Chimoch. And a bit too fast, as always. Thank you so much, Andre. You're doing a splendid job out there. Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Bobs. And uh, hello and welcome, Mr. Betterman. It's wonderful to see you here. And also a special greetings to Peter Cleaver, the chairman of the administrative board of Deutsche Welle. Thank you very much for being here. Then, ladies and gentlemen, everybody who holds a position within Deutsche Welle, anybody who holds a position or who actually writes a blog and uh, might be interested to see what winners look like and we have them all here they're all uh, here and that i think is for the first time so it's something very very special we're honored that you are here personally because uh, you're not worried anymore since the 2nd of may you have known that you are going to be the recipients of one of the sought after bobs um, 11 language categories and i have uh, learned that there is a new word a new terminology in the blogosphere it's called the bobless. Bobless are uh, everybody. Now, actually, you can actually count yourself as a bobler yourself because everybody who's got anything to do with the award, who's gained one, who's been working with the winners, who's uh, been voting. So, ladies and gentlemen, you all have a new term. You're all bobless, um, which might in German sort of uh, have a different ring uh, than in English. So, we stick to the English. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, we have the Editor-in-Chief to introduce the wonderful award ceremony. And today we have a wonderful Editor-in-Chief, Ute Schäfer. Thank you so much. And I think not everything was said and done uh, until this Bob Award ceremony will be a success story. So, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Deutsche Welle, a very warm welcome to this year's Bob's Award Ceremony. You and me, we are all part of a digital revolution. Something hopeful, something agitating, but for some people it is also something scary. They say that new technologies lead to confusion and lead to, to the destruction. The great Greek philosopher Socrates was maybe the first to start such a technology scare. At the beginning of the fourth century before Christ, writing was a fairly new craft in Greece. In Platon's book, Phaedrus, Socrates lamented the invention of writing, which according to him will create forgetfulness in the learners' souls because they will not use their memories. He thought writing would ruin the culture. The next big thing was the invention of the printing press in the 15th century. 
Among others, English author Robert Burton complained about the vast chaos and confusion of books. He was convinced that books would make the eyes and fingers ache. And then, with the invention of television and radio, cultural critic Neil Postman complained about the disappearance of childhood. He said that the un uncontrolled growth of technology destroys the viral source of our humanity. Every age has its own cultural pessimism. But there is hardly any reason for it, not even when it's about the latest supposed threat you are standing for, the internet and social media. How did we, did the world, learn about the shocking massacre in Yuhula, Syria? Who informed us when Libya's dictator Gaddafi attacked the rebel town of Benghazi? And where did we see what was going on in Cairo's Tahrir Square? Different kinds of media reported about what was going on, but most of the time, they referred to information gathered and shared by users, by protesters, by activists, by opposition members. They were the ones who set the agenda. They corrected official propaganda. They were an important source. And sometimes they have been even the only one. Until today, in Syria, Western professional media enterprises rely on those pictures, those videos, and those messages via Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and others. Social media was a driving force, first during the Green Revolution in Iran, and recently during the Arab Spring and the ongoing battles in Syria. These protests were caused by social or political discontent, but the new technologies helped the people to get organized. They helped to get the news out when the state-owned media didn't and Western media couldn't. So it comes as no surprise that dictators around the world gaze with great uneasiness at you and at all those independent voices, because they are voices that, in the long run, cannot be drowned out, that cannot be silenced, their information cannot be censored forever. And we can see once more how new technologies frighten people. The oppressors are scared, and they are scared rightly so. Since 2004, Deutsche Welle is happy to support and encourage bloggers and internet activists in their fight for democracy and human rights, for freedom of speech and equality. As a journalistic enterprise, we inform people Independently and comprehensively, we promote human rights, political participation, and education. To succeed in that, we rely on the cooperation with independent voices from all over the world. We rely on the cooperation with you. We rely on that exchange. We simply want it. Deutsche Welle broadcasts in 30 languages, and we try to actually talk in the language and about the topics our users are interested in. Feedback and cooperative exchange are essential and are a precondition for our professional credibility and quality. And that's what the BOBs embody. They are symbol and synonym for this endeavor. They award what should be as important for individual online journalists as for professional journalistic work. The courage, the bright attitude, the precise words which you, who are here today, choose to talk about relevant topics, to drag them out of the shadow of censorship or repression. On behalf of the more than 3,200 proposals and 187 nominees, I'd like to welcome this evening here in Bonn, Wang Bo from China, Rebecca Chow, an American lady living in Egypt, Sherry Al Hayek from Syria, Bukhari Konate, la bienvenue, de Mali, Arash Sigarhi from Iran, also living in the United States, and last but not least, Abu Sufyan from Bangladesh. I think we could welcome them. <laughs> the last part of my speech goes directly to you. Um, because despite censorship, despite oppression, despite having to fear for one's life in Iran, Syria, and elsewhere, 
You, our colleagues, the bloggers, make your voices heard. You search for creative and innovative ways to shed light on social problems. You try to ensure that information, as well as cities or regions, can be accessed by everyone, regardless of a disability. You give minorities and fringe groups a voice. You unflinchingly exercise your right to freedom of speech. And today, we want to say to you, thank you. You practice social media in its original sense, emerging in the middle of society. It mirrors deficits as well as progresses. It aims at social change, political improvement. That's an enormous and demanding task. And today, with the Bob Awards, we want to express our deep respect and gratitude. With this award, with the Bobs, we want to unmistakably point out how important your work is and will be, and we would like to encourage you. Do not be afraid. Keep up the good work. Keep showing the world what good new technologies can do. And on behalf of Deutsche Welle, of all research-driven journalists around the world, and also on behalf of an audience who, which is depending on and demanding for complete, balanced, and uncensored information, I simply conclude in saying, you are doing a good, a courageous job. Please proceed in this effort. Thank you so much. Uta, thank you very much for rolling out such a beautiful red carpet for our awardees. And uh, don't run away, we uh, desperately need you later on in the process. Right at the moment, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to ask a member of the jury who's been working very hard, not only himself, but of course uh, the jury has been working very hard. And uh, he's coming from uh, Bangladesh. Um, he is uh, a blogger in his own right, but he's most famous for being a, uh, an awarded photographer. He has founded a photography school in Bangladesh, uh, one of the best in the world, sought after. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome with me, Shahidul Alam. <laughs> Come to me, join me, don't be afraid. We talked earlier. I do have a mic. Um, and whilst you want to use your fo fo photograph, whilst we talk, Okay, this is news as it's happening. <laughs> in, fact, I, in, 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 fact, in fact, I think you're even faster than light itself. Um, we, to we talked earlier, and when we talked earlier, we, we said that, okay, we need to talk a little bit about the work of the jury, which was absolutely fascinating, because out of 3,000 um, to, to, to pick six uh, is tough work. Um, can you just give us one sentence on the jury work? Well, it's a bit worrying thinking you're a member of the jury because it sounds as if you're an exterminator or someone who's executing well, things. More godlike. Well, exactly. So, <laughs> uh, but the point is, it, I really see it as a celebration. I mean, I'm privileged to be part of a, a very fine group of people looking at very interesting work. And our job really is to celebrate the work that is done and ensure that the very best rises to the surface, which remarkably it did. Let's just quickly turn to your work in uh, Bangladesh um, that has spread all over the world. Um, one of the aspects is that you're actually trying to use social media and carry it out and take it into the 64 districts uh, in Bangladesh um, to give people a voice and a means of expression that they haven't had before. How difficult is that? It's certainly difficult from a technical point of view, but I think the rewards it brings overcomes that difficulty very easily. And the fact that given multimedia, given the fact that new media can short circuit the traditional mechanisms of control, means that people in the villages do genuinely have a voice through this mechanism. And that's hugely uh, satisfying. And I think what it is also doing is it's challenging the traditional structures through which information goes out, which is in fact what blogs themselves do. Uh, the hierarchical structures are no longer there, and it creates cracks, and very interesting things appear through those cracks. I think Uta has already been alluding to that, um, and uh, we have already seen cracks uh, coming up in Bangladesh uh, through the blogosphere. Um, where would you see the uh, Bangladeshi blogosphere as distinct and as enriching maybe culture and perception of people as opposed to 
state media as opposed to commercial media? Well, several things. Firstly, state media and corporate media are both, I think, propaganda. Uh, essentially, they're, they're carrying along the party line with very powerful organizations behind them. And for a lot of the journalists, and I'm, uh, Abu Sufyan, the winner, happens to be one of that group, they have worked within corporate media where they found it stilting, where they found it very difficult to make the statements that they've made. They have chosen the blog as the other option, as the only route through which they can actually say the things they want to say. Shahidul, thank you very much uh, for giving us uh, a second intro into this ceremony. Thanks. Thank you.